understanding what good works mean for, but also to young people, how they de define it, uh, how they value this idea of good work, what it really means to them and the challenges that they uh, encounter when they try and access good opportunities. But also, of course, the other um, face of the coin is understanding how employers view good work. And there's been lots of work that's been done on uh, good youth employment from employers' point of view. Uh, but there is uh, an area which is particularly small and medium enterprises and employers without the corporate social responsibility or big HR departments, uh, which are really important, particularly now and particularly in those areas where there is more disadvantage um, and more disadvantage in people and SMEs are are such a vital part of the economy. Um, and of course, the new challenges following COVID, uh, for example, also things like underemployment, which really will affect many, many sectors, uh, many employers. And the third element to bring this all together is talking to local providers, people who work on the ground and learning from them, uh, from your experiences, your priorities in terms of supporting young people into work and where good work fits in on the agenda and what challenges stand in the way of achieving that. And really, the aim is to bring these voices all in conversation um, get sort of draw as much learning as possible from from these insights and from these discussions and convey the learning to policy make and try and influence policy um, in, in this way so what has happened so far there has been an evidence review of what works in youth employment partnerships which was then complemented by two workshops with providers across the uk there were 27 representatives from scotland england wales from local authorities training providers and third sector organizations um which i'll tell you a, a bit more about in a second and now we've launched a survey uh, for young people on what good quality of work means to them uh, how they, they view it how they value it but also what their experiences have been like to date uh, and what uh, the impact of work has been on their health. Um, and I think Laura will be sharing the link uh, to that uh, later on with all of you. Um, so in the What Works workshop, what have we found? Well, in the first place, why did we do these workshops and why the focus on youth employment partnerships is this work is about uh, good youth employment? Because really the, the central uh, belief around this work is that there are so many different stepping stones and I think that's what come, what's come across during today's event uh, as well. It's not just about talking about what good work looks like but it's also about how do we get there and uh, good effective youth employment partnerships are really the co cornerstone um, of, of getting to uh, a shape a form of what good opportunities look like for different groups of young people um, and what has emerged from the workshops has been really interesting because on the one hand uh, there has been sharing of good practice and a lot of that has come out uh, from what you shared today as well person-centered approaches which are based on youth work practices as well and value-based practices having strong and long-standing and consistent relationships both among strategic and delivery partners and between each other using safe space safe spaces and investing time to build trust within people, particularly those who come from more vulnerable backgrounds and have more complex uh, life circumstances, putting really careful thought into what delivery will look like to really resonate with young people's needs and aspirations, but also employers' requirements and demands. Um, providing intensive in-work support to sustain positive destinations because that's often when the progress um, comes comes short, uh, transitions are, are really hard and sometimes people, um, young people actually disengage uh, because of the difficulties they find when making that move into, into work or other um, destinations such as training and education and really bringing young people to the table when designing services having their voice um, as, a, as a central voice in in understanding what what should be done uh, because young people are the service users and they bring that really important perspective and services can gain so much more effectiveness and so much more value by having their voice uh, as part of the conversation from the very start and of course sharing learning and good practice within the partnerships but also out with and the other um, really strong elements that came across were some of the common challenges and questions that providers have and I, I'm sure that these will be uh, some of the questions you have as well and some to which we're still to find the perfect answer and probably there isn't one because um, 
challenges vary a lot, but some of the common ones are how to do really effective employer engagement, uh, how to invest the right resources, how to talk to employers the right way, uh, what are the, the best strategies and approaches, especially when there aren't dedicated resources there, how to achieve and sustain the engagement uh, with marginalising people, with more vulnerable groups who tend to be hard to reach, uh, how to measure and monitor positive progression in the long term, but also uh, program performance, how to do effective evaluation. And once again, when resources perhaps might not be um, there dedicated to those activities in particular, how to access local data is a very big issue um, and, and doing data sharing agreements effectively and from the start, how to overcome issues of having siloed services and little shared understanding between uh, different services in one area, which also ties into issues of overcoming competition and territoriality across services which is also very common and I think um, a few people mentioned today and also another element that emerged today is how to develop a greater focus on digital inclusion both in terms of how services are delivered but also to ensure that all young people um, have access to the support they need in this really challenging time and another element was there's only so much employers can do, particularly within people who have more um, complex barriers and needs uh, when it comes to work. So how do we find that uh, middle ground, that point of encounter between the support that employers can provide and mentoring employers to do that and what support services and employer uh, support programmes, employment support programmes should actually be doing to uh, support young people effectively? Now, from this What Works of workshops and the evidence review, um, there is going to be um, a uh, toolkit and case study collection uh, coming out. Sorry, I'm just switching between uh, slides, but I'll talk about it in a second. But um, in addition to the workshops and uh, What Works evidence review, um, we've now also launched the Quality of Work survey, which I just um, mentioned a couple of minutes ago. So if you do work with young people, please, please, please do uh, share it. It would be really great to get uh, the views of as many young people as possible. So this is a survey that is specifically focused on quality and it will be asking what young people think of when when they hear the word quality what quality of work looks like for them and it's going to be uh, we we think very different for different uh, young people but also what sort of support have they accessed which they found useful in accessing better opportunities what are the challenges and the things that get in the way if they've, that, if they've had experience of work what have been the difference before covid and after covid uh, but also what has been the impact on their health both of covid but also previous experiences of work and if they they've um, experienced any issues in mental or physical health during their time in work. These are really important questions which uh, are being addressed by research in many different ways, but um, the voice having a specific tool that collects and um, tries to bring together the voice of young people hasn't really come out or uh, hasn't been shared so widely yet. So. If you want to contribute, please do. Uh, it would be really amazing. In terms of what is coming next, as I was saying, the What Works Evidence Review, the workshops insight will be brought together into a toolkit um, for practitioners and providers and a case study collection of what has worked in the past um, for, for youth employment partnerships. It's going to be very streamlined, accessible resources to really be useful and practical uh, for people on the ground. Uh, in uh, tandem with this, in, in June, though, I will be launching the IS will be launching a learning and sharing network to bring stakeholders together, both the ones, the people who were participating in the in the workshops and have contributed to the development of this work, but also any other um, organisations across uh, the UK really who are interested in coming together and uh, having conversations. Basically, there seems to be a real need, uh, and of course, um, forums and and fora like the one we're having today are really important for this and this will be specifically focused on the quality of work there will be then a period of deep dive consultations with local areas and national stakeholders uh, throughout the summer and at the beginning of autumn in each of the local areas where this research will be doing the deep dives and then there will be a paper on the quality of work from young people's perspective um, coming out in October and that's going to be just the first year of this research um, so lots lots of things happening if you want to follow up learn more about this work or get involved and, and contribute in any way please do uh, get in touch 
and that's all from me thank you very much for uh listening okay that's great thank you very much christiana that was okay. a, a really uh, great overview